before I get to Florence, I remembered I was talking about a few in the car. I bought Starlink right. Battle for Atlas, which uh, if you guys aren't familiar with it, it's that Toys to Life game with the ships that you put the guns on. You can put it on your controller. Um, I didn't. So you can get that version for like thirty bucks on Amazon right now. But I was like, oh, maybe it's on sale on Switch. So I went and looked, and the game is still sixty dollars, and all the DLC combined is forty dollars. But then if you scroll down that list, the deluxe edition on Switch is forty dollars, and that comes with everything. Hmm. So Ubisoft is having a holiday sale right now. Uh, so if you are at all interested in Starlink Battle for Atlas from the E three presentations last year and this year, go get it because oh. everything is forty dollars. Like for everything, it's forty dollars. Yeah, when was that originally announced? Was that I think like it was, and with the Star Fox announcement too? Was the, that the Star Fox announcement was this year? Okay, okay. But the initial announcement for the game was twenty seventeen. Okay. Um, because even by then, the Toys to Life stuff was kind of gone, and everybody was like, I don't know what you're going to do here. Yeah. But you don't have to engage with the toys. You can All that stuff is purchasable within the game. And for 40 bucks for a $90 package, it's an outstanding deal. So get it, um, if you had any interest in it. I had a lot of interest in it when they announced Star Fox. That was... The thing where I was like, man, Bryce, I think I might want to play this game. Mm-hmm. Because all the footage they've shown, I was like, this kind of looks like the Star Fox game I've been wanting. Where it's, you play as Fox in the R-Wing, but it's it's different enough. It's not, oh, I'll run through these levels and you can beat the game in 25 minutes, mm-hmm. even on the hard path. Like, that's not what I wanted out of a Star Fox game. And that's kind of what they gave us on the Wii U. Um, <clears throat> and I think that this is the first step into revitalizing that Star Fox franchise because this is the Star Fox game. I've only played for about an hour and a half, maybe. Maybe two hours tops. That's a lot of exposition, too. Um, But, man, this game feels so good. Uh, Peppy, Slippy, Captain Falcon, (laughs) Fox. They're all there. there. It's it's, uh, super fun to play as Fox in the R-Wing. And the way that the characters for this game interact with him doesn't feel like an afterthought. As much as that's good, you know, Fox is only on the Switch version, so you would think, oh, this is just an afterthought where you can play as him, but they're going to talk to you like you're playing the character they want you to play. That's not the case. It actually feels like you could have picked, and because there's like a bunch of different characters you could pick, and of course I went with Fox and I went with the R wing. Um, But yeah, it feels great, man. The flying feels good. The shooting feels fun. The weapons have their own little that you kind of snap onto the wings have their own little. Uh, quirks and some are charge weapons weapons some are rapid fire weapons some are semi-automatic they all have different elemental things there's fire ice uh like that's cool vortex gravitational pool an imploder like there's a whole lot of different effects on the weapons and but i've been playing naked with just the r-wing the r-wing is the only <laughs> ship <laughs> The, I did that for you. The <laughs> How R- you're the playing. R- just, the you're R-Wing playing. is the This is before ship. he bought his underwear, guys, so he was playing <laughs> yeah. naked. The R-Wing is the only ship where if you take all the guns off, it's got its own blaster. Because okay. it's an R-Wing. Uh, so I've been playing that way. Your blaster or the gate? Okay, uh, let's check both? it. Alright, alright. All right. Um, but yeah, so the R-Wing is the only ship, I think, that if you take the guns off of it, it's got, you know, it's, got, it's cannons that it always had. Okay. Um, <laughs> and if you add weapons on you use those weapons and you don't use the r-wing blasters anymore all right so <clears throat> i've been basically playing stock r-wing until i get to a boss interaction or a mini boss interaction where it's like you scan the guy it's like a metroid element to it you scan the area and it's like this enemy is weak to this type of weapon uh, okay. and it, it's that's that's the hook if you would have bought this game physically with all the things it's like oh fuck i don't have a i don't have a fire weapon i need to go to the store and buy the fire weapon to clip onto my ship Mm -hmm. um so that's the hooks and that's where they want you to go buy things but since i bought it all digitally i can just go to my menu and whatever weapon on my ship i want yeah that's awesome yeah it's it's awesome um it's probably less cool than going and then unpausing the game and everything being there but at the same time for kids it's it's less aggravating where the fuck is my flamethrower where is my ice weapon? Like, yeah. So it's all there for you to add on to your ship. And you level up and skills roll out as you level up and you can modify things as you level your character up. And the story seems kind of cool. The, the crux of the story is there's a ship, a group of people, and the guy who runs the captain of the ship, I guess you could say, is what he is, 
has learned how to make this specific type of fuel that nobody else can replicate. And he gets kidnapped by a group that needs that fuel for consumption, like to make themselves stronger, not for ships, not for anything. They, they're eating, ingesting the fuel. They're like an alien race that's ingesting the fuel. And you are, it takes place in one star system, the Atlas star system. So there's a bunch of different planets. It feels gigantic. Just looking at the map is kind of daunting, mm-hmm. which is awesome. That's kind of what I wanted. And uh, in the little bit of time I played with it, I agree with everybody who says this is like the Star Fox game we've been wanting for a long time. And this is what No Man's Sky should have been out of the box. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of exploration. It looks really nice on Switch, which um, <clears throat> a lot of games look really nice on Switch. So that's not like a revelation. But keep in mind, <clears throat> this is a cross-platform game. So inherently, I expected it to suffer on Switch. It looks fucking amazing on Switch. That's it good. runs at a nice frame rate. It's, uh, again, it's everything I've wanted from Star Fox and what I was hoping to get out of No Man's Sky and inevitably didn't play because of what everybody said. Like, this is not the game you, you <laughs> yeah. were looking for. Yeah. Uh, but this game, man, like, even down to some of the, um, like, the coloring of the plant life on the first planet you're on, the creatures you enact, with the, and you can scan them, and it adds them to your encyclopedia, and I'm sure that'll come into play later. Like, it's definitely got a lot of stuff that No Man's Sky had in it at the beginning of the game, but not, it wasn't condensed like this. And this is condensed, but not in a way that feels small. Nice. Um, and I really, really enjoy it so far. I really hope it does jump start like you said maybe hopefully this is what revitalizes it nintendo has so many franchises that are just lying dormant and yep. Star Fox is one of them that i think they could do a lot of stuff with you know and i'd love to see something where you're in and out of your ship yeah f-zero is another franchise mm-hmm. that like there, there's just so many things that they could exploit and i hope they do you know i'm glad they're doing that with metroid yeah mainline pokemon game coming yeah uh but yeah i, I animal hope. crossing animal crossing oh, yeah. but i mean star fox and f-zero are like two games that i feel like people are like come on give us more give us more give yeah. us more give us what we want you know like give us full-on fucking full featured games and i hope that maybe it is the start of something i think the issue with f-zero for me is if you want that same style of game you can't charge 60 dollars for that style of game anymore that's i mean just... what if there's a lot of stuff attached to it though like I don't know. Like, what if there's a lot of different things? Like how Burnout is, I guess. I mean, you wouldn't say Burnout shouldn't be a $60 game. Not, not Burnout Paradise. Right. But old Burnout? Right. I would say you can't you can't full price that. Like I, 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 I would like Nintendo to really embrace their whole Nindy platform and get that group of people that made Fast RMX and yeah. have them make an F-Zero game and maybe charge me $30 for it. See, I, I think we want because different I, things. I don't think... But see, like, I, I'm all for, like, evolving F-Zero. But the thing about F-Zero that felt so good was the racing. Like, of course. Right, 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 like, right. Wipeout. You can't charge $60 for a Wipeout game anymore. Um, I think Mario Kart gets away with it. And then, they're not the same style of game. But I think Mario Kart still gets away with it because it's Mario Kart. Um, but, like, just... Where you're picking a track and picking a character, and yeah, you can add a story, single player story mode to it to push you through to unlock all these extra things. That would be awesome too. But like, I wouldn't want to see them try to make like an open world racing game in F Zero. And I know that's not what you're saying. Yeah. Um, but changing that formula too much would make it not F Zero. No, I hear you, and I mean, I get, I get what you mean. I mean, it, it's not so much the fault of racing games necessarily it's more oh, the no. fault it's more the fault of we of have these big else. narrative games that come out that are 60 bucks so i understand that but i just would love to see them do yeah. something big with f-zero whatever that might be you know like i don't know i don't know i don't know if it's an online component i don't know if it is yeah that would have, that, I don't that's an absolute know. have to be there yeah if you make an f-zero game now online has to be there i mean i like i remember fondly when i first got my gamecube i fucking loved my gamecube and i remember brian and i we went and got him like at some place by his old house and like we were playing fucking wave race all day and i loved the big thing oh man the water effects splash up on the screen like but and i hear you at there's that, a place for those games right and it's unfortunate because i mean at the time those games were full yes. price games and no one batted an eye at it 
Because now we have these it, other epic always, games that come out. It always took me longer to buy those kinds of games. I was when I was a kid. Like I love those games. I love Wave Race. I love Wipeout. Um, I love F Zero. Mm -hmm. I love Mario Kart. But it always took like Mario Kart's a bad example because that price never drops. But it always took me longer to buy those games, hoping that the price would go down a little bit because inherently I would end up playing those games by myself most of the time. Mm -hmm. Now it's a lot easier to play games with other people. So maybe you could get away with like there's that game On Rush that just was on PlayStation Plus for free recently. That was a sixty dollar title, and when I saw it, I was like, "Fuck you!" Yeah, I would have. And then after playing it on PlayStation Plus, I would have paid money for that game, but like maybe thirty bucks, right? Not sixty fucking dollars. Uh, <laughs> Rick, you have like a couple days left. On Rush is for you, dude. It's free on Plus. Put it in your library. Oh, you oh, got I your hard did. drive? Did you did you yeah. download On Rush? No, no, I already got. Have you tried it? Rush. Not yet. It's you'll. That's a it Rick looks ass. Like it does. Yeah, I saw. That's, that's, I saw the trailer <laughs> this month. Yeah, yeah. December. I don't know if I put it in my library. Put it in. Yeah, it looks it looks fun. Why yeah. is it? Why is it so Rick? Because it's fucking burnout. Okay. It's the race part of burnout. It's the like the whole point of the of the the races is not to win. It's to earn the most points by blowing other cars up. Mm. It's a Rick ass Rick game. I'll have to check that out then. <gasps> yeah. I, I might I might not have just because I didn't know what it was. I might not have added yeah. it to my library. Um. So there's a place for games like that, and I'm not saying that 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 style of game is not full featured, and that style of game is not worth a developer putting a lot of money into to make. It is. It is. But you also have to know the market, and. I think that F Zero might get a pass at a sixty dollars game because it is a Nintendo franchise. Mm -hmm. But if any other company came out with an F Zero like game and tried to charge sixty dollars for it, they get fucking laughed out of the store. They get shit talked about them, and it's it's like how the fuck do you expect us to pay sixty dollars right. for a racing game without a overworld map or this or that or yeah. blah blah like fucking. You and I railed against Need for Speed Hot Pursuit or uh, uh, Hot Pursuit because of this, mm -hmm. because it was just pick your races from the overworld map is a lot easier than driving to them. Like, and there's no way that game was worth sixty dollars to us because we were one we were expecting something different. Yeah, maybe on our own. We've talked about maybe fault. that was our own fault, but at the same time, it just felt like less than the other games because there was nothing to do between races except go to the next point and race from pick it from the map. Yeah. But so there's room for those games, but like I said, you have to know your audience. Like, I'd pay forty dollars for an F Zero game. I don't think I'd pay sixty dollars for an F Zero game yeah. I, unless it completely right. changed the formula. That's right. But then it's not an F Zero. Well, I feel like they could still have the core F Zero, but with added stuff. I don't know what that is yet. Right. I just know right, I right. would get excited at a brand new F Zero game, whatever it what, might be. I would too. I'm with you. I, I just I just don't know what I would want more from it yet. I don't know. I don't have that. Yeah. It's not my job to figure that out. <laughs> yeah. Um, ah, fuck. I was going to say something when we were talking about all these games. I don't remember. I lost it. Okay. If you if it comes back, we'll go back yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So, I like Starlink. That's where, how we got off on yep. this. And I think it's worth the $40, even if you just had, like, a slight interest in it. Because, like I said, it's a $90 package for $40. Just, just do it. You owe it to yourself, especially if you love Star Fox.